Maradona and Argentina are staring World Cup humiliation in the face. They stand on the brink of failing to qualify for South Africa 2010. They have two games to turn it around. It's time for Argentina stars to stand up and be counted. South American whipping boys, Peru, the opponents. But for Maradona, the maths is simple. Only victory will do. We're in Buenos Aires tonight for live South American World Cup qualifier. A nation holds its breath as Planet Football watches on a year ago. They were world beaters. Now Maradona's men are on the verge of sinking into the soccer wilderness. Welcome along to what promises to be a very tense night in Buenos Aires. And for anyone with a passion for Argentina, Ozzy Ardiles is no exception. Ozzy, very nervous tonight. <laughs> Ozzy, how have Argentina allowed themselves to get in this position? Well, we have time. <laughs> <laughs> Six is starting to go wrong uh, when the last coach was in charge, uh, Basile. This is why he resigned. He lost one game and he resigned against, against Chile. Uh, and then Maradona took over, and if anything, Argentina tried to, to go from, from bad to worse. Um, it's, it's a lot, a lot of problems in, in the team. Argentina basically is not playing like a team. Of course, we have a lot of individuals, uh, very, very talented individuals, super, super players. Of course, Lionel Messi, the number one. Um, but if you don't do it as a team, you, you are going to have problems. They were third when Basile stepped down as Argentina coach. Tonight, they are fifth, the top four qualify automatically for South Africa 2010. The fifth spot currently held by Argentina go into a playoff against a CONCACAF team. Will that be what is assigned to Argentina? They play Peru tonight. We'll bring you the goals from the other three games as well before we go off air tonight. They are at Medellin, Colombia. Three wins in three at home and have conceded none in those three. Take on a Chile side who if they win they will qualify. Ecuador against Uruguay and Venezuela against Paraguay. Let's put this into some sort of perception though. Argentina, Aussie, against Peru tonight. Bottom, they've only scored two away goals in these World Cup qualifiers. One of those was an own goal. They're 91st in the world ranking behind Bahrain, Benin and Burkina Faso. So they are not a power in world football anymore, Peru. Only victory will do, and it has to be by a good margin to give them some confidence, does it, ahead of Uruguay in their final game for us? Well, first is to win the game. Uh, I don't see anybody thinking about uh, scoring a lot of goals or anything like that. The, the first thing is to win. We need to win this game. I believe if we don't win the game tonight, we are not going to win the World Cup. This is how important it is. And it's going to be very, very nervous uh, surrounding in, in El Monumental in, in, in Buenos Aires. We are very lucky in, the, in a way that we are playing Peru, that, as you say, are the, the worst team in South America. It's, it's a pity that they're in such a, in such a bad position, but this is, the, this is the case right now. So uh, we will see. I, I believe Argentina is playing with a very, uh, with a lot of players with not a lot of experience. A lot of uh, players have the, the first cup, for example, was such an important game. So I would say anything can happen. It's going to be a very, very nervous affair. But I believe that Argentina, because of the individual, at the end of the day, they're going to have the, the result that they want and the, that we are going to win. Just saw Maradona waving. Will he be waving goodbye? to the coaching job of Argentina, though, in a couple of games' time. Seven changes he's made to this side. To make sense of that, our commentary team, Terry Gibson and John Driscoll. Welcome along. This is the game they're bound to win. This is the one that we all put three points beside when totting up how many Argentina would end up with at the end of the campaign. But under Diego Maradona, nothing is quite what it seems. Three consecutive defeats in World Cup qualifying is already an unwanted record. Their 43-match unbeaten run was broken at home by Brazil. We're going to have a period of reflection and we'll come back with the teams after that. And so here we go. Their 43 match unbeaten run at home was broken. Peru, though, haven't beaten Argentina since 1997. They've never beaten them, 
in Argentina. So defeat is unthinkable, surely. But with Diego Maradona in charge, nothing has quite turned out as Argentina would have wanted. It's a famous venue, it's where they won the World Cup in 1978, the home of River Plate. It could be the scene of an unwelcome nightmare tonight if they were to slip up against Peru. But Peru are rank outsiders. We know that they are not going. By this stage, four years ago, Argentina were already well qualified. They qualified with three games to spare. It's going down to the wire. We'll keep you up to date with the scores as we go from the other games. It will all go down to Wednesday. The only way that things can be really resolved tonight, if Argentina lose here and Ecuador win in their game, then we know that they can't qualify automatically. Almost any other scenario keeps it open until Wednesday. So much relies on the shoulders of Lionel Messi. He hasn't performed as we know he can under Diego Maradona. And here he is. Could this be his night? Higuain's had his first touch in international football. It's lively from Argentina. The final shot was a, a little disappointing from one of the, the new guys who's come in tonight. This is Enzo Perez. I think it's the best spell of football passing football we've seen from Argentina for at least four or five games. Lionel Messi involved in every aspect of that attack. It's vital tonight, He's, he plays in a, a position, a free role where he can just go and get on the ball. His fellow teammates just give him the ball as much as possible. Just hope for a huge slice of inspiration, a huge slice of magic. And they're big players. And there's no bigger player for Argentina than Lionel Messi. This is Jonas Gutierrez who comes in at right back tonight. Here's Messi with one of those clever reverse balls that we know he can pull off so well. Came off Enzo Perez. Well, he played the last ball in, comes off a defender behind for a corner for Argentina. We'll recap the team news for you in a moment. But first of all, Argentina keeping the pressure on. This is so much better. If you haven't been following these games, you might be taken aback by Argentina's position and how poorly they played. Big team news concerns this man taking the corner, Aymar back in the side. It's not the most convincing of punches by Leao Boutron, the Peru goalkeeper. Aymar is back in the Argentina side after a two-year absence. They make seven changes tonight. He always makes changes. Diego Maradona totally reworking his defence. Liverpool's Miliano Insua makes his debut. Jonas Gutierrez plays at right back, not a natural position for him. 36-year-old Rolando Schiavi wins his third cap. That's all in front of a goalkeeper winning his second cap, Sergio Romero. Higuain finally gets a call, making his debut up front. And then, as I say, Enzo Perez, who wasn't named in the original squad, he was called up as cover for Javier Mascherano. And then he ends up playing alongside him. The latest players to suffer the chop, Zanetti's out. Gar goes out, Datolo, who is the last player to score for them, he's out, Lisandro's out, Maxi's out, Papa's out, Dominguez out. They all played in the last couple of games. Five of the starters in the Paraguay game weren't in the squad, and Veron is suspended after his red card in that. And that brings the total number of players that he's called on to 78 in less than a year of international football. Got a newcomers there. So Perry playing alongside Mascherano in central midfield, but already on three occasions, not in three, just over three and a half minutes. He's got into an attacking position, so he looks like he's going to be Mascherano just anchoring the midfield for. And then so Perry is given license to go and join an attack with the likes of Messi, Di Maria, Imo, and Iguain. There's been a clamour for Gonzalo Iguain to be called up. Real Madrid attacker, big and strong and fast, and he, in a way, will give them the focal point that they, they haven't had because he's been reluctant to use the likes of Diego Melito and Lisandro, who are similar kinds of players in a way, maybe not as good. Yeah, he's been relying on, on Tevez and Aguero in particular, similar type of players. We had Lionel Messi to those two as well. It's quite a, a diminutive attacking front three. 
You need a target man just to, to hold the ball up. Now players to get in good possession, uh, good positions. Argentina do rely on a possession game, and it's important you have that, that striker that can hold the ball up, is mobile. Of course, Gonzalo Guayne is that and can score a goal or two as well. Neymar will try and perform the, the playmaker role, putting in the, the devastating passes through. The job that Raquel May can do so well. Raquel May doesn't play for Argentina. He's not while Maradona is the coach. He's never picked Esteban Cambiasso or Walter Samuel of Inter. Foul there committed by Juan Vargas on Lionel Messi. There's Norberto Solano, of course, very familiar to fans of the, the Premier League in England. Back playing club football in Peru again. Retiring on Wednesday night, Solano. So this is his penultimate game, he's 34. Argentina attack again with a lovely ball across. And it was a real chance there for the one man that he does show some faith in, constantly picking in his teams. And he did seem to be a little offside, he was offside. Just a yard or so offside, there, the assistant referee raising his flag. The defence just lost concentration there, quick free kick. Argentina almost, almost took a vital lead. The one game in which they have looked good was the, the Venezuela match. First half was a little ropey, but then they, they were too strong for Venezuela in the home game, ended up winning 4-0, and everyone thought that he was on the right track since then. The only, only game they won in the competitive matches was a real hard-fought affair against Colombia, where Cata Diaz headed the only goal he's never been picked since. <laughs> well, we have, of course, we get the obligatory changes from Diego Maradona. It is slightly unsettling that the problem with international football is you don't get days and days and weeks and weeks to bed down players and bed down a system of play. Not only have we seen changes in personnel, we've seen changes in the style of play. They've played with three at the back in one game, I think it's Bolivia when they lost 6-1. And they do keep changing those players and it's difficult for new players to come into the squad. Of course then you've got the problem, the added problem, the, the players that think they are regulars suddenly are not. They're jettisoned from the squad altogether. And there's a lack of belief that spreads amongst the squad then in, in regards in their own, they're not securing their own places in the squad. It's a good take by Di Maria. Beaten to the second ball though, and Peru are able to clear. Di Maria is back in, he was given a four-game ban after his red card in that embarrassing defeat against Bolivia that you referred to, Terry, and that was, it was a a terrible challenge, it came on, didn't they? They were really up against it, came on and got sent off really quickly for a ridiculous challenge. Really not what was needed in that kind of situation. On one of Argentina's worst nights. If they lose tonight, it will be something up there rivaling that. I think it was their, their worst defeat in 53 years. And unfortunately for Maradona, the spell has just gone on and got worse and worse. Really, they should be in this position. We've seen Paraguay qualify, with, and they haven't got the individual talent that Argentina have got. Chile are on the verge of qualifying as well. By no means do they compare player for player. Look at the squad available to Maradona. Not that he always picks the, the best players at his disposal. But, uh, they certainly should be in this position. And it's critical now. It's a critical situation for one of the giants of world football. This is Vargas, he plays for Fiorentina. He's a left-sided midfield player tonight, he can play left wing back, left back as well. There's Solano, the captain. That's well won back, Mastrano doing the job that he's in the team for. And sparking the attack again. Can he find Gonzalo Higuain? Had time to get it down and try the turn. Eventually they got to him, the clearance isn't the most convincing. Gutierrez tries to keep it going. And Di Maria will strike it. Struck with power is a talented player, no doubt about that. It's excellent work from Mascherano. A little bit of spell of possession. Mascherano decides to leave his position, go and hunt the ball down, win it back. 
set Argentina on the attack. Gonzalo Higuain there, just trying to evade the attentions of Zambrano in the, in the 18 yard box. You see the long range effort from Di Maria. That's important that Argentina have aggression in their game tonight. It's vital that Masciano leads them in those situations. People follow suit, start closing down, and winning the ball back as quickly as possible. Peru are bottom of the group. They they can raise themselves off the bottom, but they're also looking basically to the future towards well, the campaign after this one. I guess it's been a tough time for them. The glory days are long since behind them. They were briefly suspended by FIFA. It was lifted. There were no games played in that time because of interference by politicians with their FA. The last meeting between these two ended in a draw, a late equalising goal in Lima by Fano, who is playing up front tonight. Cambiasso scored the goal for Argentina. The most famous or infamous meeting was in 1978 in the, the World Cup. It was the second group stage, and Argentina had to win by four goals to nil, and they won by six goals to nil, among allegations of bribery, denied, of course, by both camps. And in a echo of past days, there were some stories in the Peruvian press this week about offers made to the Peru players, offers made to lose this game and offers made to win or draw it. If there's any truth in that, then they're on to a winner regardless of the result. Gutierrez, who was injured for the, the last two qualifiers that they lost. This is Aymar, hasn't played since the Copa America final in 2007. And they've been through some players since, since then. It's only 29, which does raise an eye, eyebrows, doesn't it? Because he was very young when he first came in. Pablo Aymar winning his 51st cap tonight. This is Vargas for Peru. Whistles as the word for the Peruvian anthem before the game. Well, they were in the penalty area there, and Jonas Gutierrez got back and put the challenge in. And it's Johan Fano who is down. I think the game will have to stop. But again, it's Peru, the little spell of possession. I think that's important. Argentina don't allow that. Peru will grow in confidence, expecting an onslaught from the home team. Sufano there just trying to get in behind Gutierrez. Might be a cause of concern for Argentina. The lack of defensive cover down the, the right flank. Gutierrez, as we all know, certainly not a fullback. So I think Maradona would like him to play in an advanced position. Further up the pitch, but at times he's going to be called upon to defend. Peru have lost seven of their last eight matches. The one they've won. Actually, does Argentina a big favour? They beat Uruguay in September with a late goal by uh, Renjifo, who's on the bench. Without that, Argentina wouldn't even be in the playoff place as they are at the moment. They'd be below Uruguay. And their last game is against Uruguay on Wednesday night. Of course, we've got that one for you as well. So where they hope to complete their comeback. And in the, the CONCACAF region, it's looking like it will be Honduras or perhaps Costa Rica, who the playoff will be against. There was a point at which it looked like it might be Mexico. So that's better news for Argentina or for whoever ends up in that position, Ecuador, Peru or whoever. Aymar tries to sweep it on into the, the penalty area. Di Maria does well, wins a free kick, just about in shooting distance. We see Messi linking up with Pablo, Pablo Aymar. I think Fulton is crucial tonight. Those two can link up. Service to Gonzalo Higuain. Likes of Di Maria there. Fouled by Luis Ramirez. They look nice and bright in attack in Argentina. Plenty of movement, plenty of skill. Just 
like to see him in midfield, go and win the ball back quicker. And keep piling on that pressure. Aymar. I think it was a shot. Played in two World Cups for Argentina. Probably thought his days were over. A two-year gap but, uh, between his caps. With Maradona in charge at the moment, I guess he might have expected the unexpected. Of course, he's got his call up tonight. There was talk that Messi was involved in the selection of Imar back in the squad. Now, here's a promising situation for Argentina until the final ball. A little disappointed by Di Maria. Bouton did well to catch it. No, it's very disappointing. This is a great opportunity in the final third. So Brian commits himself. It's caught out position. Back for really unsettled. Good attacking numbers. Attacking the 18 yard box. And it needed far better quality on that cross. But it is all Argentina. Saw young Sergio Romero come in for his debut in the Paraguay game. He's changed his goalkeepers throughout as well, Maradona, but he seems to have hit upon a very good one here. Plays for Azed Alkmaar in Holland. Picked up an injury in his last game actually, but he's okay to play. And he was very positive and made some really good saves against Paraguay. That could have been even worse that, that night without Romero. Free kick here for Argentina, foul on Ainte. Fano has been involved in most of the attacking play that Peru have had so far. This is Jonas Gutierrez for Argentina. He's got Iguain in the middle. Beaten in the air. He might get another chance here. There should be plenty of pressure for Argentina. And Di Maria puts it in again. That's good play by Messi. We know he's got pace, we know he can take players on. It's so hard to knock off the ball. Here is Messi. Keeps on going, has to get round one of his own teammates down on the ground and tries to play in. Higuain. He goes over the top again, a simple route through to Angel de Maria of Benfica. Into corner. Fantastic play from. Lionel yeah, Messi, it's Perez that was laying down on the floor injured. Messi not had to beat the defenders, had to dribble around his own player. And then he found the way through to supply Gonzalo Higuain. Messi's corner, too close to the goalkeeper. Higuain, by the way, only tonight actually commits his future to Argentina. He'd always said that that was his intention, but he could have played for France. He was born in France because his, his dad was an international player. Colombia have taken the lead against Chile, and Arturo Vidal own goal. So as it stands, Colombia move up to 23 points. We'll have all the goals after the game for you. Here's Messi. To Aymar. Perez was making the forward run, almost got it through to him, but they win it back. They have to get this right again, Argentina, but they have, and it's over the bar. Well, he looked nailed on to get an opening. A debut goal there for Gonzalo Higuain. An excellent play in the build-up, and he really should have scored. That's good work from Di Maria, quality on the cross. Higuain looks like he's going to score there, put under pressure by. Alberto Rodriguez, all marks to the defender. Didn't expect the back of the net to be bulging there. Gonzalo Higuain on his first cap. And that should have been Argentina, one goal to the good. Of course, for optimism, I think, for Maradona. Seen his side create two or three 
decent chances in the opening, just coming up for 20 minutes. It would be such a relief if his side could take one of those. For him personally, I think for his players, they're playing well, they're good movement, good passing. Of course, they don't want a game to go on for much longer. The nil-nil scoreline, the pressure starts to tell. I think they're full at the moment. They fully deserve to be in the lead. Free kick goes against Higuain. Again, they're attacking, again, they're finding space. And again, it's Higuain through. And he mishit it, and the goalkeeper made a save. I think he was wrong footed there by. The scuffed shot by the Argentina number nine. Again, it's Di Maria. It's a good angle to run. Straight pass from Di Maria. Tyler Higuain completely mistimes the shot. It's actually a good save, isn't it? It's an excellent save. Sets a dive to his right, expecting the, the hard driven shot from Higuain towards the near post. He's had to improvise. He uses his left foot to make sure the ball stays safely out of his goal. He's certainly busy, hasn't he? Been trying in the lovely stages of the game. Good pressure from Argentina. Mostly down the left flank with Di Maria. It's a, a good start from the home team. Reina Torres in the midfield for Peru. Argentina have left Sergio Guerrero and Carlos Tevez on the bench tonight to go with Gonzalo Higuain, supported by Messi, Aymar and Di Maria. Looks better balance. Easier to look better against Peru at home than it is to play against Paraguay away and to play Brazil here, of course. And they lost their last three games. They were always difficult games. You looked on the fixture list and you saw Ecuador away, Brazil home, and then Paraguay away. And you thought before that they wanted to be in a strong position. They were humiliated by Bolivia. Oh, there's Messi the charge again, look how quickly they're around him and fouling him. It's an exquisite couple of touches there, wasn't there, for Messi. The severe pressure, here we see, drops his shoulder, look at that, absolutely superb. Mr. Ramirez finally brings him down, referee Walton in the set piece. Very skilled technique here, just absolutely wonderful. The arm up the shoulder from the forward player for Peru, retreating. Prompted the, Brazil, the Bolivian referee to give the free kick, René Ortube. Peru were trying to put a bit of pressure on him beforehand, saying, I hope he's not a homer, that he's able to withstand the pressure of helping Argentina along the way. This is Messi, floated in. Boutron, confident to let it go behind. Sure if Messi was trying the shot here or trying to dink it into the box with players to attack. A lot of pressure on the goal. Real Boutron. Messi hasn't scored since that Venezuela game, the first competitive match for Maradona. But none of their forward players have scored since then. Cata Diaz got the header against Colombia and Dottolo got one against Brazil. And in the competitive matches, that's it. Done well in friendlies, but that's a different matter, isn't it? Played Ghana in a friendly recently with all Argentina based players. A lovely play again by Messi. So strong, so well balanced. Here's Aymar. Back again to the genius that is Leo Messi. Just to show that he's human like the rest of us, he gave it away. But here he is back on the ball again. Again, dancing away from challenges and going for the one two here. Messi being found offside. Again, it's good play from Mascherano. Again, that Argentina lost possession before Peru played away out of trouble. It's a close call for the assistant referee there. It's goes in favour of the defenders. Mascherano really set the tone for the Argentina play, Argentinian play, guiding them 
positive pressing, winning the ball back quickly, not allowing Peru to get a foothold in this game. The Argentina Federation, by the way, have arranged a friendly game against Spain in mid-November, the dates of the, the playoffs, as part of the Spanish Federation's centenary celebrations. Obviously hoping that they can make that appointment and they're not taking on Costa Rica or Honduras or whoever. That's Jose Del Solar, who is the coach of Peru, of course. 74 caps he won as a player. It's not now to play by Carlos Zambrano of Schalke. But a few foreign based players, most of them play in Peru. Alvi Solano wins the, the free kick from uh, Newcastle and West Ham and Aston Villa player. Soft free kick, really. Just leaning into the back of the very, very experienced Peru skipper. The only two teams not involved tonight. You can see tomorrow night in South America Bolivia versus Brazil. That's 9 pm Sky Sports 1 on the red button from kickoff. The rest of the game you can pick up later in the evening. Brazil already qualified, but always, always worth watching, of course. Free kick here again for Argentina. Aymar is fouled by Vilches. I don't think there's any need to brandish that imaginary yellow card, is there? It's a good run for Aymar, who's been really busy, really wants to get involved in all the attacking play. This be a player who's not affected by the lack of confidence amongst the ranks at the moment, not been involved for two years. decides to run with it and why not when you've got his ability here is Messi you can sense the understanding between those two players can't you Imar and Messi appreciation of each other's abilities just enjoy the flame of each other as I said earlier I think there was a talk that Messi was hopeful that if we had a word with Maradona that Imar would be back in the squad if so, he's got his wish. And they're just lacking that goal at the moment. The rest of the play has been, been excellent tonight, but so it should be against the Peruvian team that's down on its confidence, probably wants the qualification process to end as quickly as possible. And Argentina do need to get that breakthrough and get the one goal lead. Messi fouled. Probably say that a couple of dozen times in the course of most games. Main save forward to Aymar, shows his strength. Good play again by Aymar, but no free kick this time. Place for Benfica these days, Pablo Aymar. He had lost track of him since he left Spain and Zaragoza. Teammate then of Di Maria. Gavi, the 36-year-old, who was called up to universal surprise, including his own for those September games. He was the one who, when Maradona rang him, asked the coach if it was a hoax. There are lots of players I think most of us would put in the Argentina team ahead of him. But he is there, he's got his chance. This is Gonzalo Higuain. A lovely play again, smart turn by Di Maria, now Messi. Messi plays the early ball this time. The attempt at the fancy finish was from Imar. So Argentina at their best, quick passing, one touch, two touch stopping. Well, with Higuain, Di Maria finally pulls the lead on Messi. Just tries to fade it in towards Pablo Imar. Tried an audacious back heel. 
again, it's those two players linking up, always looking dangerous. Just imagine how eventually break that through defence. Falls one pass, Butron in the goal. Well, misplaced pass in the midfield there by Solano, actually, of all people. Perez getting forward, and Gutierrez on the overlap. What is in the side for is the defender on the seat of his pants, and then dicked into the back post, and it's popped up in the air, and that's good goalkeeping by Boutron. Fouled by Messi. Wasn't a great header by Zambrano straight up in the air. See Messi battling away the far post, good play from Boutron, who I think injures his own player, Zambrano. She's dinked up towards the far post. Desperate defending. Peru. Movement's excellent from Messi. He's popping up in all types of attacking positions. Di Maria, Pablo Aymar. this week that Maradona had threatened to quit his job as Argentina's coach unless he got to run things his way. Usually for a threat to work, the person on the receiving end has to fear the consequences. It's probably the last thing his squad needed this week for him to, to add more pressure onto the, the whole situation. He later denied it, said it was a misunderstanding. It's misunderstood in lots of ways, Diego Maradona. Had a, Right all rant at Manchester City as well over the injury to Pablo Zabaleta because he played in the Monday night game having been called up, picked up an injury and Maradona had this idea that someone from the Argentina FA should have gone to Manchester to stop him playing. That's it. <laughs> exactly how he saw that panning out, I'm not sure. I think he blames Bilardo, didn't he? His supposed mentor at the, at the Argentinian FA, who's involved with Maradona and the squad, has meant to be an experienced coach to oversee things, give advice to Maradona. I don't think the relationship is quite working out as planned. This is Gutierrez. Gets it back again. Perez winning his second cap, he played in the Ghana game, that was when he won his first cap, he's 23, plays for Estudiantes. Too much more, we can't really tell you. It was a, another surprise call. And it whistles around the stadium now, just wondering if the mood is changing at El Monumental. forward but it's deflected out of play so it's an Argentina throw Aymar with a lovely drift past a couple of players the defending has been good enough from Peru I don't want to heap praise on them because they've been hanging on a little bit It's Gabby Ainsay, the centre-back on the overlapping run here. No one making that run to the back post again. That's what it might need from Argentina, just something different to, to break up the mass defence that we are playing now. Back four, they've got midfield five, they're all sitting deep. See the central defender, Hainsey, for Argentina. 
someone coming in at the back post there would have been an easy chance. Obviously, the Argentine defenders at the moment not having to do a lot of defending. Like Gutierrez is probably playing tonight, almost playing as an extra wide player for, for Argentina. Emiliano and Suu hasn't pushed on as much. Hainsey taking the lead there, seeing the space, seeing the opportunity, pushing on to Athens numbers in the midfield area. Not a good pass by Schiavi. They can't afford the Argentina, they can't afford to be sloppy at all at the back. Got plenty of time, plenty of possession there. They need to up the passing, put it into midfield areas, important they link up with Mascherano. Try and get service into the front players. Messi was well marshalled that time, forced backwards. They go back to Schiavi, of course, Peru will be happy to see Schiavi on the ball and not Messi. That wasn't a great ball by Mascherano, it invited the challenge. And Messi does well to come and win it back. Slightly more difficult now. Those chances early in the game, they really dominated. Through finding it a little bit more comfortable now to defend. Occasions committing more players into the field area, attacking positions. And they've got a free kick. Now, this is the kind of situation that Peru would have been hoping for. Vargas, the player, foul. And Vargas makes a good attacking player, but he's Pretty much resigned at the moment to defend it, but he loves to break down that left flank. He can get forward, put pressure on the and shift right back. Gutierrez gives Peru the opportunity. Argentina struggled defending set pieces against Brazil recently. These could be the only chances that Peru get, not from open play, from set pieces. the other games with something resting on them but taking place at the same time and there's been a real turnaround in Colombia Ponce with the first with the equalizer for Chile and then very quickly after that they took the lead through Suazo so they have turned that game around and are qualifying as it stands there's Perez to pull it back and that should be a free kick so in a way I think that one probably does Argentina a favor I think Realistically, Chile will finish above them. They'd move on to 30 points if they win that game. And if Argentina win here, that will mean Colombia couldn't then catch them. Very complicated. As I say, we'll have all the goals after we finish here, and Rob will bring you up to date on how it all stands as well. And then we'll finish it all off on Wednesday night. Perry's got a really good position, didn't really make the most of that final cross into the box. Just a little bit hurried on one or two crosses, the wide areas Argentina just need to more composure, pick out a player. Time has flown, flown hasn't it? But starting off the game and Argentina were really on top. So things just get a little bit untidy. Peru finding it more comfortable, we're up to 38 minutes, still no breakthrough. Argentina. They're not rushing here, are they? they? Just need to take it eventually. Argentina win it back. The chance for Iguain was one clear one, but they haven't really created many to go with the possession. Mascherano almost gives it away. Sua gets forward here to Di Maria. Aymar, Aymar in the penalty area, and across the face! They went close that time. Danger not cleared yet. Iguain keeps it moving. Then Gutierrez to Di Maria, who slips as he struck it. And it's a good deflection. Corner for Argentina. And 
just good work from De Maria. Slides it to Pablo Aymar. It's the type of cross strikers dream about getting debut in international football. I think Higuain in particular, the main striker, the main centre forward, should be there for a tap in. And there's to Messi! That was close. Again, Messi finds space just inside the 18-yard box. I think he's going to curl it, try and swing it in towards the far post. But he went for power, just inches past the far post. Boutron didn't get a touch. But good pressure again from Argentina as we move towards half-time. Less than a year in charge for Diego Maradona, who was appointed last November. Had to wait quite a while to make his debut as a coach. He plays for Sile, very experienced manager who stood down. He's now gone back to Boca Juniors. Aymar to Higuain. Good play by Alberto Rodriguez to put the challenge in. If Chile do make it through tonight, there'll be two Argentine coaches that qualified for the World Cup. And Argentina still waiting. Not short of talent, either coaching or playing. Here's Messi, a little bit of room here for Lionel Messi. And Perez. Definitely a real feeling of frustration and of impatience now. Yes, it's, it's certainly grown as the half has progressed. I think they played well, Argentina, they just can't find that quality final pass or a final finish. Some good attacks, Perez has been involved in a lot of them, but it's the one player at the moment, so he's lacking that quality in the final third. It's only second cap, the first one being the friendly against Ghana. It's his first competitive match. Pressure is on in this game, has got a lot of experience. Maradona can shake things up, perhaps the Guerra and Tevez. Another strike alongside Higuain, I think. Here's Gutierrez. Perez again. From the position that he was a minute ago. This time he goes short into Messi. And again, Peru are happy to mass their bodies around the edge of the penalty area. Very deep, very central. I was telling you, not having to do a lot of defending, are they? Maradona could get another strike up so, alongside Higuain, probably possibly drop Aymar back into midfield. Looks like Mascherano. This would be the player for me that would make way just to allow that striker. I've seen a couple of crosses flash across the face of the goal. Messi and Aymar are Main support to Higuain, playing slightly deeper. Just so needs someone to tap in in front of the goal, finish these quality moves off. That was Insua getting forward that time. Not to good effect though. Well, they've got Aguero, Tevez, and Martin Palermo on the bench. This is by Schiavi. That wasn't the best of passes either to Vargas. Actually quite a good position there for Peru. A rare attack from the team. So now Maradona's come up, he's got to come up with a solution during the half-time break. Trying to get that elusive first goal. Calm the nerves of everybody. The longer the game goes on, we'll just sit back and defend. Nothing to lose, they'd be happy with a point. And Di Maria again looking. 
looking positive here, and once more it goes in, and a mix-up between defender and goalkeeper. Virtually took it out of the hands of his goalkeeper, but Peru get away with it again, and get themselves a free kick to relieve the pressure. Maria supplied a non-stop stream of crosses coming in from the left flank. Yeah, he just needed a poacher there. Let's get on the end of that cross from Di Maria. Finish off that attacking move. Di Maria's been excellent in the first half. Really caused cool problems for right back Zambrano. Can't look for his pace. Two minutes of stoppage time at the end of this first half. First half dominated by Argentina, but all square. They stick to plan A. Is plan A good enough? Do they think that, well, we'll get a goal eventually, playing like this, dominating like we are? Or can their coach come up with something? The goal would certainly ease the anxiety of everybody in this stadium. A lot of Peruvian players, of course. Well, they're nice and bright in the opening stages of the game. I think the attacking play has been good. Since the anxiety growing around the stadium now, amongst the players. Somehow, as I said, Maradona's got to come up with a solution at half time. To ensure his team get the goals they deserve, their play deserves. Let's put it into perspective. We've been a poor team in this qualification group. Only two away goals in the whole process of qualification. Two wins. So Argentina should be beaten. As yet, they can't get their breakthrough. And they really can't afford a draw. Too late for that. Dropped too many points since Maradona took over. They weren't brilliant beforehand. They won their first three games with the Basile, but then they stuttered a bit, and in the ten games that he was in charge for, they collected 16 points. Tonight, they're no further forward, really. The Bolivian referee blows his whistle for half-time. A little early, we feel. But Argentina a bit frustrated again. They've been in charge. Messi has seen plenty of the ball. Of that, there has been no doubt. But they haven't got a goal, and they need a goal. Half time at El Fundamental, Argentina nil, Peru nil. Quite. No, 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 no. You know, this is the crucial game, this is the, the, the game that, that has to win. Palermo is, is, is a big guy, so it's, uh, this is probably he, does, he did it for, for tactical reasons. Not that I particularly agree, not Trevor, I'm sure. But uh, that's, that will be the reason. Aussie. Argentina mm. will win 2 0. You can relax. Mm. <laughs> OK, well, we've heard it here. Uh, by the way, Gutierrez, Heinze, Mascherano, Messi, all are booking away from suspension. Rene Otube, the Bolivian official we saw there, might pull out a card or two, and Argentina could be in even more trouble ahead of Uruguay. Let's find out. Second half commentary team. As always, Terry Gibson and John Driscoll. And so yet another shuffle of the cards from Diego Maradona, and on comes Martin Palermo. Veteran striker of Boca Juniors who had a nine-year gap between internationals before his recent recall. And Peru start the second half on the front foot. It's uh, Fano breaking forward. Argentina still napping there. Peru were out early compared to their hosts. Fano just beats the offside trap there. There we see the problems are never changing. Back four there. You can Schiavi completely playing on side Fano. So Palermo's first job is to go back and defend the near post. He is a big man. It's a cleverly worked corner and it comes off the crossbar. Well, it's the closest we've come to a goal. Fabulous technique from Juan Vargas. It's absolutely sensational. It's a corner from Novi Solano. Well worked routine. He spots Vargas 25 yards out from goal. Technique of the corner was spot on. What a fantastic effort from Vargas. Romero looked complacent, just got a slight touch to it. If they go again, and they get to it first again, the return pass one way or another to Solano, who then plays it in, and that is good, brave goalkeeping. Fano caught Romero. He's OK. Fano's entitled to go for this cross, good cross to the near post. 
Solano just volleys it back across goal. Goalkeeping for Romero. It's a positive start from Peru in the second half, isn't it? They grew in confidence as the first half went on. Argentina couldn't find that breakthrough. Just been a slightly bit more ambitious now, Peru. Again, Peru stop dead. Look at the, the potential of the injury. They go on, balanced. They just got it away, Argentina. Siavi and Nainze, the centre back pairings tonight. Again, a total reshuffle again, seven changes. Another one at half time, but they're through with Iguain! And the debutant has delivered. And Argentina can smile again at last. See there the smile on the face of Gonzalo Higuain. At last he got the chance. Jubilant Diego Maradona, mightily relieved. The first goal was going to be so, so important for Argentina. Peru are just gaining confidence. You see, he just breaks the offside track there. Once he gets the sight on goal, just fires it in towards the far post. Pass Boutron. An outstanding finish, it's Pablo Aymar, he's got that vision for that sort of pass, creates the service for Gonzalo Higuain, an emphatic finish from the Real Madrid striker. Well, the latest reach of from Diego Maradona has borne fruit there, Aymar through to Higuain, the Real Madrid striker, who Maradona seemed determined not to select, he finally did, and it seems like it's the right decision. Fine start to his genuine international career for Higuain. He's played an underage game for Argentina, but this is his full debut. Messi seems to pull further over to the right in the absence of, of Perez, who played right of centre in the, in the first half. I mean, that was the, the, the obvious choice to make to bring on the, the extra attacker. I think it paid dividends there. Gonzalo Guayne found extra space because of Palermo being in closer contact, giving support to the. And in fact, Guayne in the first half was the lone striker. It's a great pass, threaded between the defenders. Well timed run from Gonzalo Higuain. Well, he missed the first two chances he was presented with in the first half, made no mistake with the third, great technique, look at the relief and the jubilation on the Argentinian bench. First goal was so important, leaves the nerves, didn't want to be going into an hour or so of this game, still on level terms. They can relax now, play their passing football, make sure they're fully concentrated in defence. As Ozzy said, it's not the night for... They have to go and get four or five goals, First thing they had to do was win and get the three points. But I do believe, as Trevor said, they could easily go on now and score more goals. Realistically, they're not going to make up the goal difference on Uruguay, who are on plus eight. Argentina now just on plus two. But significantly, as it stands, Argentina moved back into the automatic qualification positions. Could change, of course. The other games are going on simultaneously to this one. Let you know exactly what happens, bring you all the goals. Well, there have been many goals. Chile leading 2 1 against Colombia. Now we're getting coaches waving imaginary yellow cards against Rene Torres. Good shot, sharp play there from Imar. Central midfield role now, and pretty much all the 4 4 2. So Mascherano is pretty much owned the midfield in the first half, completely run the show. Di Maria with the cross into the penalty area, taken away from Gonzalo Higuain, but only just. I think, think you have to give Maradona credit, he had to come up with a solution at half-time. Ozzy, Trevor, myself, we all agreed that there was a need for an extra striker. He acted swiftly. Certainly, I think Argentina certainly deserved to be ahead in this game, comfortably. 
huge sigh of relief around the stadium. If they win this game, will he stick with the same kind of lineup for the Uruguay match, or will it be the, the names back in the hat, as Trevor said? I've given up trying to second guess Diego Maradona. It's Sewer now of Liverpool. I would say, though, John, is that Uruguay won't be a much harder proposition than to the right home. Neymar really annoyed with himself, putting too much meat on that one. As he tried to get Gutierrez in, he spotted the run. Then he linked up well, didn't he, with Lionel Messi, and he could give him going. It's the final move, through to hit Wayne over here. So Mascherano can just patrol the midfield and make sure they must solid defensively. The player to go and win the ball back. And Neymar can just get on the ball, find the pass. And to break forward from the midfield quarter. Mascherano being closed down by Fano. Neymar tried to trick his way away from again the very close attentions of his markers but knocked it out of play we used to talk about the Maradona factor as a player making Argentina better of course and dragging them through to successes that they otherwise wouldn't have achieved almost the other way round as a manager the Maradona factor was a leveler here come Peru with a, a rare attack of course they did hit the bar a minute or so before the Argentina goal the stadium as Ainsé came forward. And roar again as Palermo goes down, asking for the penalty. Certainly a good tackle from behind there from Rodriguez. I think he gets an up on the ball there to benefit the referee's decision. Again, a surprise from Maradona, we're talking about the likes of Tevez and Aguero coming on. Here comes Messi, a little bit of room, and he's chopped down there unceremoniously, and it's a yellow card brandished to Zambrano, first of the night. It's completely beaten, all ends up here by Messi, just drops his shoulder, just chops it away with his left foot. Crashing down to the ground. course gives them an, another obvious target in there at six foot three Imar's job to find him and it goes from Imar it wasn't a bad ball and the free kick is given by the referee for a bit of holding shoving by the Argentina players To Palermo might see it differently. I thought I saw it was high kicking from the Peru defender then. Can't see too much in the way of a freak, an infringement by Palermo. Slight shoulder, a slight arm on the shoulder of Rodriguez. Palermo, we were talking, Trevor was making the point earlier about the surprise inclusion of Imar after a two year absence. But this fellow had a near enough 10 year absence. So you shouldn't be surprised at all with the inclusion of Imar. But uh, again, we said at half time, I personally thought if a striker was going to be added to the play in the second half, it was going to be either be Guerrero or Tevez. Palermo, it's two goals in the friend against Ghana. Full of confidence. He's got the absolute trust of Diego Maradona. It's a painful one, isn't it, for the veteran striker? He's bloodied, but. Not yet out of this game. To try and patch him up and get him back out there. Peru have a man advantage for the time being. They've offered very little going forward, with the exception of that brilliant corner. Brennan Torres in the midfield. Make sure that Palermo's totally free of blood, of course, before he's allowed to 
come back onto the pitch. And of course, the wait for a player to be recalled, but what else the referee could do, really? And he is back on at the first opportunity. But now Peru are through, and Romero makes a brilliant save for the first one, and then a block, and the referee waves away the call for the penalty. Furious appeals from Peru. Well, they were unhinged that time, Argentina. They got through that time, Peru. And Jose Del Solar is furious. You see, it's Park Hesse involved in the play. Paul Stefano, he should be scoring now. Good save from Romero. Solano with the rebound. It's in sewer, isn't it, with his arms to block it. Referee Adaman made the decision straight away. But again, just another evidence of a, an unsettled back four that hasn't played much together. So the likes of Hainsey there has got to lead the back line, take control, make sure they, sure they, they concentrate in the entire 90 minutes plus injury time, keep the clean sheet and they get the valuable three points. Just moments ago we saw Hainsey playing in the left wing position and I think at 1-0 ahead, such an important game, important situation, he should be staying put in his role at centre-back, making sure his team defend with their lives. And they have a free kick to defend here. One plus point in all of this period of turmoil for Argentina, as they do seem to have found a very good goalkeeper. And it's only 22, Sergio Romero, only winning his second cap tonight. I got the floor, Big pressure on the referee, it was a big call. Juan Vargas to take the free kick for Peru. The goalkeeper just seemed to lose it momentarily. I don't know if it was heading for the top corner, he had to tip it over. Need some pace on the delivery from Vargas. One minute he's shooting a goal, he's put into a dangerous area. He deals with it quite comfortably in the end. Almost an hour played, here's the corner clear. It certainly was a dangerous situation, wasn't it, for Argentina? Rain lashing down in Buenos Aires. Another free kick for Peru, they want to take it quickly. Christian Ramos getting forward, haven't seen too much evidence of that so far in the game. And then he loses out to Mascherano. with a lovely touch and Di Maria. <laughs> Let's find out what's happening elsewhere in the South American World Cup qualifiers. Paraguay have taken the lead against Venezuela. Cabanas, the goal scorer there. And Colombia have an equalising goal. Moreno, the goal scorer. So, probably does Argentina a favour, all of that. Venezuela are one of the teams just behind them. Paraguay already qualified, so that's good news for Argentina. Colombia, Colombia not winning is probably what they want from that fixture. So, so far, so good tonight. But we always thought this was the night that would go their way. In the game, away to Uruguay, a much more significant test. That's Wednesday night.
bit of ticketing. Flutters around, nothing quite to match 1978. And this stadium is utterly awash with the stuff as they beat Holland in this stadium to win the World Cup. For the first time, they won it again. Inspired by Maradona in 86, can Messi inspire them? So the World Cup in South Africa. They get there and they get themselves sorted out, they become a team that can win the World Cup, of course. I know some England fans who have the perspective that they don't want Argentina to qualify because it's a potential winner out of the way. There are plenty of people who think that the bigger team should always be there and the World Cup loses something. watched by the goalkeeper the Peru Boutron. See they were able to cross to the far post. He's got the angle of cross slightly wrong. Maybe the goalkeeper Boutron. Certainly more evenly match game, isn't it, in the second half? Peru having gone the goal behind, although in fairness to them, they came out really fired up for the second half, didn't they? Nearly took the lead for the goal from Gonzalo Higuain. It's a much more open game now. That's a good move again by Argentina, Gutierrez to get back to his feet and win it back again. That time they were a little over elaborate there, Argentina, but they win it back once more. Di Maria. Elegant on the ball, the young midfield player. Insure plays it towards Lema, who is trying to pull away at the back post. Is out, there's a little gap behind him. Vargas is running in behind Gutierrez. Romero decided to stay, got the decision right in the end. He's so positive, isn't he? Sometimes to a fault. And then Fano gives the free kick away. Again, Argentina, we've got to be careful with the. Goes the full back to the back four. Just going and support the attack rather than go on beyond. So in Sui, Sui get caught out of position. Gutierrez get caught out of position. Just need to remain nice and solid as a unit. Well, here's an interesting change. Like for like, I think you could say Solano going off. And he's replaced by Roberto Palacios. And they're losing a guy winning his 94th cap, replacing him with a guy winning his 125th. And like Solano, he will be standing down from international football this coming Wednesday night against Bolivia. Immediately takes over the armband. Well, he went over a, a century of caps, never made it to Europe in his club clear, career, Palacios. Played in Brazil, played in Mexico, and of course in Peru. And they're picking their way through here, and they've opened up Argentina! And somehow it bubbles past everybody. Fano was waiting, did Schiavi get a touch on it? Well, eventually finds its way to... Christian Ramos. I think Fano is in an offside position now. Ball just doesn't cross, doesn't find its way, way through to him. You can see him now indicating there should be more pace on the cross. Surely he was way offside. Way offside. Peru corner. Excellent jump by Ainsley. In fact, he was that offside. I was surprised that the crossed it to Fano in the first place. This is obviously in an offside position, it would have been better off shooting towards goal. Another example of the Argentinian defence that haven't played together, 
But we've got Schiavi, who's age 36. I know it's his only second cap, but an experienced footballer. Hainsey, experienced footballer. He's got, they've got to rein those full backs in and keep a nice solid back four. Bascherano, the control in front of them. It's enough attacking players in the team that they're losing their shape. Hainsey away. This is not one yet for Argentina, not by a long way. Rodriguez was fortunate in a way to get it away. Now then, is this a move to tighten things up? Is it Higuain coming off, I wonder? It was Dimitrelis who we saw about to come on, and it is. So, defender or defensive midfield player replacing a centre-forward, Terry. I'm not sure about this one, John. Exasperating, to be honest, I think the back four is, is bordered enough. Lily Callis is going to go and play, and they'll play three at the back. With probably Chris Gutierrez and Siron. Change of style, change of tactics, change of formation. It's not really what's needed. I think they're losing a little bit of possession in midfield compared to the first half, purely because there's, there's one less central midfield player in there. So we're going to see what uh, Maradona has come up with. occasion to, to that put an extra defender on after 67 minutes at home against the worst team in the group by far slightly worrying the 91st ranked team in the world their worst ever ranking Peru thinking it's time to get off isn't he Gonzalo he probably doesn't know his way around He's finally made his competitive debut for the, the country of his choice. He's an Argentine national, even though he wasn't born in the country. And he has delivered the goal that puts them back, at the moment, into the automatic qualification places. Game of the night is going on in Colombia. Chile have retaken the lead. Valdivia, the goal scorer, and that means that they would be qualifying tonight, Chile. Would virtually leave Colombia out of it. It's definitely a three at the back, three central defenders. Maradona, Markin, one centre forward, they're going to be completely outnumbered in midfield now. Well, he hasn't kept the same defence from game to game ever in his tenure, and about half of those games he's changed the defence during the course of the match as well. If I remember rightly, the last time they played the three central defenders, it's a way to Bolivia. Argentina got beat 6-1. Understood it if you're taking off the grain and put a, another midfield player on. Because they certainly have lost control of the midfield area, they're not as much having as much possession. I think that's the area that needed shoring up the midfield area once they've got the one goal lead. Tidy play again between Palacios and Vargas. Who was clear and struggled a long way across the pretty much across the edge of the Argentina penalty area. Dimitrelis with the, the long ball, but Palermo to chase. Big and strong, but he's not blessed with pace, certainly not in the league of Gonzalo Higuain. Can Peru play their way back into this game? with great firepower, hence their position at the bottom of the group. They're fighting their way into dangerous positions in the final third now. And they're bringing on a little bit of firepower. 
they scored the, the winning goal, a rare, very rare winning goal for them against Uruguay. And Anbrangifo, and it's Fano who is going off. He did have a good chance. What a save out of the keeper, Romero. Anbrangifo plays for Lech Poznan in Poland. Argentina having no possession whatsoever at the moment. We've reverted to playing the long ball game, the conditions really made it heavy going for Argentina. And after once they've got that one goal lead, they go from strength to strength. They sit back on that one goal lead. Here come Argentina again with Aymar on the charge. Good challenge to stop him. Free kick for Peru. Of course, you can see the rain. And probably what you can hear as well. Smacking into the effects microphones around the, the edge of the pitch at El Monumental. Team is confusion. Trying to identify the system of play. He's playing well. As the team has completely lost his shape. As it's working hard. There's no real cohesion amongst the, the defence, the midfield. Gone back to the lone striker with Palermo. He's not as mobile as Gonzalo Higuain having a lot more possession, they can bit more players into attack, and it's going to be a nervy last what, 16, 17 minutes for the home supporters to endure, and it certainly shouldn't be that way. Smart play again by Christian Ramos. A lot more time on the ball in this second half. A storm in Buenos Aires going on, windy as well as rainy, as you might be able to work out for yourselves. Rodriguez forward for Peru. It'd be a major shock if they could pull off an, even a draw. And Romero got one wrong that time. Corner for Peru. Nervy times for Argentina. Well, I thought that once they got that first goal, the anxiety would have disappeared, but it's, it seems to have got worse. And that's become that the, because of the changes made to the team, we can see the wind, the rain. Conditions are, are becoming increasingly difficult. A real leveller, as if it wasn't close enough. Peru again into the penalty area, and it's Dimicelis who puts it behind from another cross by Ramos. Peru just grinding confidence, of course, they're the team that's bottom in the group. Argentina away would be a big scalp for them if they can take something from this game. They've got more possession, they're getting players into the box, they're getting deliveries into the box. Grumis from Vargas as he faces up. with a little bit of trepidation of the advertising hoarding behind it to see whether it might be blowing his way. Aymar is going off. Or is he? Does he want to defend this corner first? Federico Insua comes on, a more defensive-minded midfield player. Vargas with the corner. Away by Sterano, I think, in there. It's a 
matter with what else is going on in the games that matter. Ecuador took the lead against Uruguay. Valencia, the goal scorer, but didn't last long. Quick reply by Uruguay. Suarez, fine player, a minute later. So that's all back as we were at half time in regards to that. Ecuador winning. Double edged sword, really, for Argentina. It would mean that Argentina drop back into the playoff place, but that would effectively eliminate Uruguay from catching Argentina, which might not be a bad thing ahead of Wednesday night. As it stands, Uruguay is still in with it. They go back to being three points behind Argentina, but with a better goal difference and with the game against Argentina to come. At the moment, I think the priority for Maradona on his men is to ensure they take all three points here. I think they make really hard work of it. the camera up on the top of the gantry is as shaky as Diego Maradona's tactical awareness. Again, the tension rises around the stadium, doesn't it? The whistles from the home supporters as Argentina are forced to play back to the goalkeeper. Really thought and hoped that when Higuain put that ball in early in the second half and they might go on to actually win a game in style. More action from South America live tomorrow night, 9pm on the red button initially Sky Sports 1, Bolivia versus Brazil and then the deciders on Wednesday, Uruguay versus Argentina, it's Wednesday 11pm Sky Sports 1 and all of the, the action from the other games as well. We'll keep you exactly up to date with the qualification picture. Can Argentina do it? Well, we've got 11 minutes plus a bit of stoppage time here tonight. If they hang on, their chances are considerably improved. They should still do it. If you were laying odds, I'd go very strongly that Argentina should do it. Work to do in this game, though, John. Possession, more of the football. Anything up front to really trouble the Argentine defence. Time on the ball, Peru. Nasserano sticking a boot in to try and clear, but Peru just went it back again. Good chairs to Vargas. Free kick for the visitors. They're making heavy weather of this, Argentina. Nightmarish conditions. They're in real peril, Argentina. They lead by a goal to nil. And again, they simply must win. Spargas has shown great technique tonight and good deliveries from set pieces. This is going to be swinging away from Romero in the Argentinian goal. The goalkeeper wisely stays on his line. Someone in there unwisely gave a free kick away. Another goal in the game of the night. It looks like Chile might just have won that one. 4 2 they lead. Mariano, the goal scorer this time, and that would take them to 30 points there, surely. Bound for the World Cup in South Africa. 
number of teams have made it tonight. Some of the big names are there, of course, Germany, Italy. Ivory Coast have got there. And Chile have got there before Argentina. Gifo gives the free kick away. He doesn't think he did. It's coached a free kick. Nancy there just dwelling on the ball. Gifo showing a bit of aggression, determination. Contrast the performance between before Argentina took the lead. Once they got that goal from Higuain, it's remarkable. I mean, how good was Di Maria in the first half? Non-stop supply, crosses from the left flank. We've seen very little of Lionel Messi in the second half. Argentina haven't had much possession in the in the last 20 minutes. They're sitting back on that goal. They're trying to protect their lead. Playing a bit of fear of themselves almost. Can Messi produce something special to wrap it up and get them the three points? Conditions are awful, but it's the same for both teams. Messi, there, Messi just trying to find Palermo. Helped his run, kept himself in an onside position. Conditions are absolutely awful, but... Well, it's barely playable, but Argentina go on. Well, Palermo is totally and utterly unmarked. Maybe they couldn't see him through the hail. Good example there of how the conditions can be played by Peru. Keeping the ball on the ground, moving it swiftly. Another good break. Down that right, it's been more profitable in the second half, hasn't it? As you say, Terry Moore came down the left in the first. Careless in possession that time and reckless in the challenge there. Good to hear this. Good job he missed. Messi who delivers and Palermo went down like a felled tree there, didn't he? He said he's six foot three, John, he's built like a heavyweight boxer. Went down far too easy there. A little bit too obvious for the referee. So I'm sure there is some shirt pulling from both players there. So they're jostling for position in the box. Paraguay going to the World Cup in style. I don't saw the goal scorer. They've got some good players, Paraguay. They're a pretty good team. Looks like Venezuela's dreams are disappearing. Looks like the players out there are disappearing. Need flippers for the last five minutes of this one. See the rain there on the running track, really sweeping across. I should say Emiliano in sewer, of course, the two in sewers are out there now. You're being unkind, Terry, it says the best way to watch Argentina under Diego Maradona through a misty lens on the camera. This is a game we hope we all had. Argentina down to win. I think once they get first goal, they were going to be convincing winners. That hasn't materialised. It's a nervy ending to the game. Everyone concerned with Argentina. Awful conditions. The players really need to retain their concentration levels. Keep their clean sheet, take the three points. Quite alarmed with the change in form since the first goal, since the only goal of the game from Higuain. You can see the desperation in 
Argentina players are hanging on to that one goal lead. Of course, the conditions are absolutely horrendous at the moment. What Argentina and Maradona would give for the full time whistle to blow now. I think, as Ozzy said before the game, it didn't matter how many they won the game tonight. The three points was a must to give themselves any chance of qualifying in fourth place going on to the World Cup finals. They can just hold on though. Offside here. Could find themselves smiling in the South African sunshine come June. Maybe even July if they're still involved then. And they look back on this very, very difficult night against Peru. If they come away with the points and it's enough to get them there on Wednesday. Maria brought down, free kick for Argentina. That's a good run from Di Maria, we haven't seen a lot of him in the second half. I haven't seen a lot of anybody in the last few minutes. <laughs> and so getting close up, Di Maria just making the roads across the field, trying to attack the Peru defence. Thankfully, the pitch is standing up, isn't it? There's no water settling anywhere. No free kicks, it's the referee. Oh, I've got away with that one, Peru. Can Peru put a little bit of pressure on in the the closing stages of the game really make the, the nerves jangle and the, the Argentinian defence. A couple of set pieces they can deliver into the box, put the Mero and the back four, back five, back three, whatever it is now for Maradona, who knows, under a little bit of pressure. Well, Maradona's time in charge of Argentina has verged on the farcical at times. And we've got conditions, climactic conditions to match tonight. Venezuela will pull the goal back against Paraguay, probably too little, too late. Rondo, the goal scorer there, but. They need some dramatic turnaround. Well, they're in again behind here, Peru, and there's no flag as it's fired across, and that somehow kept out. Kept out. I think Romero got a touch to it as it came off the defender, and back across it goes. And Fargas can get it down and put it back in, and it's a goal! 18 seconds from the end of the 90, and Peru have equalised! It's Argentina's worst nightmare. In a storm in Buenos Aires, Peru have scored. Maradona can't believe it. Argentina can't believe it. And their World Cup hopes are hanging by a thread now in this terrible storm on a terrible night for Argentina. It's shambolic defending. It's when Gifo with the final touch, but the cross is allowed to come in, unopposed. There's two or three attempts to clear the ball from Argentina. They don't get players close enough either to stop the cross, to stop the knockdown, to stop Ringifo heading it back into the goal. Argentina, though, still have hope, but they don't have a penalty. Incredibly dramatic scenes. In a tropical storm, the goalkeeper decides to catch it low. Well, they might blame the weather, Argentina. There are many things he could try and blame. But we know where the fingers will be pointed, and they will be pointed at Diego Maradona. More controversial decisions by the coach. Here's Messi, he can't control it, he gets it back again, though. 
And Di Maria, is there a twist in the tail here for Argentina as it goes in towards Di Michaelis? It's over the bar, Argentina have a chance in stoppage time. They need a goal desperately here. Shades of 1970 when they drew with Peru when they needed to win. The last time they failed to make the World Cup. Maradona sent out positive signal at half time, pushing Palermo up front with Higuain, but as soon as they scored, negative signal sent out, extra defenders. In it goes, last chance maybe for Argentina. Di Maria puts it back in, and there are enough in there. And a shooting chance, all the way through! Oh, wow! It's Martin Palermo! And Argentina have won it at the death, surely not! The man who sat out of international football for nearly a decade. No one could believe it when he brought him back. But Maradona has called that one right. And Argentina are back in it. They're heading for three points. And who knows, they might be at the World Cup after all. The match behind. Decision to include Palermo. He's come up trumps. He's just loitering around at the far post. But it's an attacking mindset from Argentina that they haven't had since the goal from Gonzalo Higuain. They need to get the winning goal. It's Palermo that pops up just on the far post. It's a deflection on the shot. It falls to Palermo, two yards out, and he makes no mistake. An incredible ending. What a celebration from Maradona as he goes full strength across the surface. I'm not sure he should be doing that at his age possibly in his condition, but it just goes to show the relief on the coach of Argentina. He's not a standard international football coach, is he, Diego Maradona? This has been a roller coaster ride, they've hit the bar again! And Romero saying he didn't touch it. The officials disagree, and they've given a, a corner here. It's from the kickoff, isn't it? Audacious and so nearly brilliant. I think it's Reina Torres with the long range effort. Tell me there can't be another twist in this. In the fifth minute of stoppage time, Peru have another corner. They equalise in the last minute of the 90. It's in there again. Argentina just want the whistle. That's all they want. And it's all over. And Argentina have come through this one with three points. We expected it to be straightforward. It was about as far from straightforward as you can possibly imagine. And Maradona is the chief cheerleader. And Argentina can celebrate a victory over Peru. They're fighting for their World Cup place. It will go down to the wire in Montevideo on Wednesday. In this most dramatic of matches, it is finally all over. And Argentina have won it, they've beaten Peru. Final score, Argentina 2, Peru 1. Goodness me. Draw breath while you can. These fans are absolutely delighted. What a twist, what drama. The celebrations there... Uh, Understandable, I guess. Relief, more than celebration. Palermo with that 93rd minute winner. Argentina were in all sorts of trouble, drawing against a Peru side who'd only managed to score twice away from home or World Cup qualifying. And one of those was an own goal. Eight straight defeats before this for Peru away from home. But Martin Palermo, who once missed a hat trick of penalties, in a game, has come up trumps and slotted the ball away to give Argentina a victory that might well go down in the history books as vital.